so potentially upgraded their in-house media department. How about that? <laughs> By signing J.J. Reddick to a four-year deal. According to Syracuse grad and great reporter Dave McMiniman, LeBron had no say in the hire. Brew, is J.J. Reddick qualified for this job? Well, look, there have been more than a dozen players that became head coaches without any experience, okay? So I guess some people might say in that sense, but I would say no, I would say none of them were qualified, whether they did well or not. If there is a certain thing as a qualification for a head coach, J.J. Reddick doesn't meet it. He has coached no one over 12 years old, yeah. ever. You know, so you how can you be – no one can say with a straight face that he's qualified, okay? Even if you look at the players that went to become head coaches, because I'm – who was successful? Well, and I know there's a number Mark Jackson I thought had success, but I'm going to talk about success relative to what does J.J. Reddick have to do to be viewed Steve as successful? Kerr. Yeah. That's – Okay, if he has to be Steve no, Kerr. No, no, no. Oh, no. I would say I'm Steve saying. Kerr's been successful. Right. Steve it, Kerr's been successful. D Doc Rivers won a championship. But not with the team that hired not him. Not with the team that hired him. Yep. But Larry Bird was successful. Yep. Got to the finals. And Jay Kidd, not with the team that That's hired him. That's the other kid. But he's been to the so, finals. So let me jump in on that point. So because, you're saying Kerr's the only one? Well, I'm going to show it to you. So since Bird. There have been nine. It'll be easier for the audience to see than you guys, but I, I'll, ex I'll explain what that says. Nine coaches who had no experience ever walk, you know, get a job like J.J. Reddick. The only one that won more than one playoff series with the team that hired him is Kerr. The only one. So, I mean, Doc Rivers, three seasons in Orlando, zero playoff series. Isaiah Thomas, three seasons in Indy, yep. zero playoff series. Vinny Del Negro, famously, three seasons in uh, uh, Chicago, pardon me, uh, zero playoff series wins, might have been two. Mark Jackson, three seasons in Golden State, one playoff series win. Jay Kidd, three season, one season with the Nets, one playoff series win. Kerr, six and 23, <laughs> all that stuff. And then Derek Fisher, two seasons, zero playoff series. Steve Nash, three seasons, one playoff series. So even the ones, Brew, this is why it's such a risk that we're – Doc, Jay Kidd, yep. oh, those are good coaches. Not for the team that hired them. Right. Not until they got, you know what, experience. And they did, and they and did okay. They did okay, but, but it didn't – But okay is not going to okay save it. Okay is not going to save it. So it's just the – our old – well, I, I don't want to quote him because I don't know if he wanted to be quoted. But someone brought this up to me yesterday, and I thought it was a good point. Why has J.J. not gotten the Jeff Saturday treatment? Oh, I, 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 I can answer that. Why? At least I, football is different. Oh, because it's just the you cannot, bar? I cannot – it is the hardest of the three major sports to coach. I think I, the coach has much more of a – is a factor in the success – I cannot imagine, and I don't know why the Colts did, that anyone, anyone Correct. could step out of never coaching <laughs> to coaching the NFL okay. football. It, basketball, it can be done. So, that, so that's why he didn't get the full Jeff Saturday treatment. I guess the reason it piqued my interest was the Jeff Saturday thing was a sign of a totally dysfunctional organization, owner. It was a, it was a punchline, right? And the J.J. thing is... He's going to walk in as an above-average coach as far as pay. $8 million a year is more than Missoula makes. Yep. It's more than they were willing to offer Ty Lue. What so, was Vo uh, uh, Ham I thought, was around five? Or, I thought Ham was around four and Vogel yep. was around five. Like I, So I, my answer, Danny, is no, he is not. So the reporting on this for me and I trust the reporters yeah. I know some of them yeah. some of it's been weird some of it's been pretty straightforward it is beginning to strain the limits of logic for me to say that LeBron sat back and had no word no influence okay maybe he wants plausible deniability but does anyone here really believe JJ Redick is the coach of the Lakers if he does not host a podcast with LeBron James. No, but I don't think those two things are necessarily the same thing as what you're saying. I think they might have hired him because he hosts the pod with LeBron. I do not think that necessarily means LeBron called Rob Palenka or Jeannie Bush and, I, Bush and endorsed this. I, I agree, but the smoke signal has been up on J.J. Redick for weeks. I mean, we know that Coach K is advising Rob Palenka on this. We know that LeBron has a relationship with Coach K. 
I mean, he could call his podcast producer if he didn't want it to be I J.J. Mean, Reddick. If, if he, he can, wants to be involved, if LeBron wanted to be involved, like, I'm not against LeBron being involved. I don't I, think he was, but he's LeBron James. No, of course, I'm not and against he's it the either. Best player on the team. So I, I have no problem if he was involved. To answer your question, I don't think the podcast has something to do with it. Like him being hired. I think the Lakers can say, look, we know that our team leader respects this guy. So if, if J.J. Reddick steps into training camp and has the respect of LeBron, which he will, then that should get everybody else in line. The reason I disagree that he could have got the job had they not done a podcast is because J.J. was on the head coaching uh, radar. He yeah. got interviewed by Toronto last year. Yeah. They got one of the best GMs in the league, Masai sure. Ujiri. Charlotte, Charlotte was interesting. But he got, inv- yeah, yep. he got in- interviewed with them this year. So I, I think he would have gotten some interest from the Lakers regardless. I, that may be true. It just seems to me like if LeBron didn't want this to happen, he'd put it out there. And agree so, with that. You I, know, they, they give yeah. him ample opportunity to reach out and be like, no, 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 we don't want it. It was like, okay, LeBron doesn't want to make this hire. He doesn't want the responsibility of it because J.J. should be coaching there long beyond uh, when LeBron James is done playing for the Lakers and done playing in the NBA. It just strikes me that that relationship is too much of a coincidence. The hire happened, right? J.J. is the coach? He's the coach. Has LeBron said anything? I find that a little interesting. LeBron Tate tweeted a beautiful article, wonderful article about his lovely wife, Savannah, from Harper's Bazaar. Um, and uh, yesterday, LeBron tweeted about Ryan Coogler. I'm, don't I don't you know. think so it's smart? You, I don't think, know. You think, I, don't know. I don't think it would look – LeBron already knows that the perception is he correct. hired J.J. Reddick. Correct. I, I wouldn't I, tweet anything if I were him. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, Wait observing for the that it hasn't happened The question yet. is, has, I, has AD or any of the other players the, tweeted? Then maybe they have. The, well, I don't even think AD has a Twitter, and he certainly is not it's tweeting, tweeting today. I, 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 Alex Caruso, I don't know if it was a tweet or what it was, but there, Alex Caruso, there, there was some type of quote about Alex Caruso keeping receipts and how this is going to help him. <laughs> so I'm not sure, I'm not sure what those receipts are, the, but. The first the, interview with JJ and the Lakers was weeks ago. They, the, how many podcast episodes the, have they done since then? Like, the, JJ and LeBron have talked about JJ being the coach of the Lakers. Well, that, okay. All right. They, they we'll, we'll, we'll talk LeBron here for another moment. In more LeBron news, Dan Wojcicki of the uh, – Dan Wojcicki is reporting, pardon me, that LeBron is expected to opt out of his contract, but that <clears> doesn't mean exactly what it sounds. We all already knew he was going right, to opt out. Right. The question is, when he uh, after he opts out, will he end up re-signing with the Lakers? Brew – do you think there is any chance LeBron is leaving Los Angeles? I won't say none, um, but I think 2%. I think it's small. But I, I will – and the reason I go 2%, maybe I should go a little higher. And, and LeBron, I've covered a lot of – I covered a lot of his free agencies. Mm-hmm. He always plays it close to the vest. Yeah. All right, so no matter what. And that's why, like when Cleveland – and that was his first one, or, you know, first one when he left. He did not – they weren't sure, does LeBron still want Mike Brown? Does he want Mike Brown fired? They got no word from LeBron, all right? He just stayed out of it, and I think that's what he did with this. But he is – like, even when he's texting with Dan Hurley, he's saying, if I'm there. You know, so that makes you think, are his – you know, are the the wheels turning in his head? And I'll say this. We know he's not going to Phoenix. Rich Paul is on the record. He's not going to Phoenix for the minimum. Yeah, probably not going anywhere for the minimum. Well, right. And that takes out uh, almost all the contenders, almost all of them, all right? You got Philly, which has the cap room, makes great sense basketball-wise. Yeah. All right? But I I don't see that necessarily happening. Then I'm going to throw out a few other teams. Miami, I don't think they have the trade. They'd have to make a trade. Yeah. I don't think they have the pieces, all right, because they'd have to give yeah. up a lot of their pieces that LeBron would Cleveland want to play does. with. Cleveland has the pieces because the Darius Garland. The Knicks is the one to me because if LeBron wants to really make a splash, and and look, we know – he he cares about the GOAT conversation. Course, he can yeah. say he doesn't, yeah. but and he it cares James about it. this week with that fraudulent defense player of the year award mistake. I, I, I don't Being know. taken from Michael I'm Jordan. Not sure. I'm not sure. I, I, I still got to look through the film. Oh, oh, I was <laughs> telling you. I just, I mean, I'll all choose my sudden, sources. The door is a little more wide, wide no, open, but, but go ahead. But look, real talk. He, LeBron's – now, forget all – some players were with Derek Jeter, with one team their whole career, Kobe Bryant. That ain't Bron. That's not Bron. He's been around. Lean into it if you want. And if he went to New York, 
You lead four if you won a championship there. Four championships for four different teams. Yeah. And you went all of a sudden, if you lead New York to the first title in 50 some odd years, Oof. you got the New York media on your side right. in the GOAT debate. Absolutely. And so if he wants to do this, and there are trades that make sense there for the are, Lakers. Right. So we, there, there's, Julius Randle and whoever. There's Josh trades Hart, that. Bogart, and I, and the, uh, Mitchell Robinson.